Congratulations on completing the exercise and on recalling and using what you learnt in the other block the exercises. In this exercise, we are going to learn to generate more types of random variables, and we are going to learn how to compute histograms. In this task, for instance, you are going to learn how to write a program to generate a multinomial random variable. Before we get onto that, however, let's first re briefly review what your program that completed the last task did. If you did the task correctly, the final result, shown in the plotting window, would have looked something like the graph on the right-hand side of this slide. The bar centred on 0 tells you the fraction of your Bernoulli random variables that were equal to 0, while the bar centred on 1 tells you the fraction of your Bernoulli random variables that were equal to 1. The Python code that generated the graph is shown on the right-hand side of this slide now. If we focus only on the part shown now, this code should be very familiar to you. The code is essentially generating a sample of 200 Bernoulli random variables. It would have perhaps been even more familiar had I not written a function called Bernoulli to generate the random variables and if I had instead included the function to generate the random variables in the main loop. I want you to get used to, you to, get used to this business of writing and calling functions that we learned about at the end of the second block of the exercise, however, and I so use, so use this less familiar form for the code. Let's now turn to the first new bit of code that we've introduced in this exercise, which I am now re-showing you here. The first line here creates two lists, both of which have two elements. The first of these lists, x vowels, just contains the numbers 0 and 1. This ultimately will be used for the x coordinates of our bars. The second, meanwhile, has both elements set to 0 initially. This is the list called y vowels. As the loop executes, the zeroth element of this list will be used to count the number of random variables that are equal to zero, while the second element of this list is used to count the number of random variables that were equal to one. Consequently, when the loop is finished, we have a list y vowels that contains the number of failures in its first element and the number of successes in its second element. We can thus plot a bar chart with x vowels against y vowels and get something like the plot shown on the left hand side of the slide. The estimate of the probability mass function that you would get if you plotted the data in this way, however, would not be normalised. Adding together the heights of all the bars would give you n, the number of sample data points, rather than 1. To get a normalised graph, we thus divide each element of y vowels by the number of variables we sampled, as shown here. Hopefully, the manner in which this code operates is reasonably clear, and you can also easily see how the part that computes the histogram could be extended so that you could estimate the probability mass functions for multinomial random variables, which are discrete random variables that can take two, more than two values. Making this extension is rather straightforward. It is simply a matter of increasing the length of the two lists, x vowels and y vowels. In fact, the only slightly difficult question is how do we generate the multinomial random variables? To understand how to generate multinomial random variables, it is useful to think once again about the algorithm that we use to generate the Bernoulli random variables. If you remember, in describing this algorithm, we use the probability mass function shown here to divide the interval between 0 and 1 into two segments with lengths proportional to the probabilities of success, which is shown in green in the figure, and failure, which is shown in blue. We then generated a uniform random variable between 0 and 1, and if the value of this random variable fell in the blue region, we set the Bernoulli random variable to 0. If the value of the random variable fed, fell into the green segment, meanwhile, we set the Bernoulli random variable equal to 1. In the code on the right of the slide, we test whether or not our random variable falls in the blue region of the line by using an if statement. I have explained the way this algorithm for generating Bernoulli random variable works slightly differently to the way that I've explained it in the previous videos, because when you see the algorithm in this way, it is easy to see how it can be extended and how we can use an I similar idea to generate variables from a multinomial distribution. To see how this works, consider the probability mass function for the multinomial distribution, where the random variable can take one of three different values, 0, 1, or 2, that is shown here. 
As we did for the Bernoulli random variable, we can put these three bars side by side and thus combine them into a single bar of length 1, as shown here. The division between the blue part and the green part would be at P0, so the blue seg segment has a length of P0. The division part between the green part and the red part is at P0 plus P1, so the green part has a total length of P1, which leaves the red part having a length of P2. We can now generate our uniform random variable between 0 and 1 again. If the value that we generate with, when we generate this random variable is in the blue segment of the line, we set the multinomial random variable equal to 0. If instead it is in the green segment of the line, then we set the multinomial random variable equal to 1. Lastly, if the uniform random variable is in the red segment of the line, we set the multinomial random variable equal to 2. The Python code to generate multinomial random variables in this way is shown on the right of this next slide. As you can see, the first line in our function here sets a variable called u equal to a uniform random variable between 0 and 1. This is done in the usual way. The second line then checks if u is less than p0, and thus in the blue segment of the line, shown up here. If u is less than p0, execution of the function stops at this point and the function returns a value of 0. If u is greater than p0, the execution of the function continues and we check if u is less than p0 plus p1. For this condition to be satisfied, u must lie within the green line segment because the previous if statement has just checked whether we're within the blue statement and established that we are not. We can thus safely terminate the execution of our function at this point and return a value of 1 if this second condition, that u is less than p0 plus p1, is satisfied. Lastly, if neither of these two conditions are satisfied, then we know that the value of u must be within the red line segment, so our function returns a 2. And that is it. You should now know enough to complete the task in the next exercise. Which, is what, which will ask you to generate multiple samples from a multinomial distribution and to compute a histogram for these samples. The two key pieces of code that we have covered in this video and that you will need to use to complete this task are shown again in this final summary slide. This code on the left hand side is the part for computing the histogram. The key line here is this one, which counts how often the variable takes each of the various values in the sample space. The code shown here on the right hand side, meanwhile, shows how you can generate multinomial random variables. This code can be in a separate function, or it can be embedded within the loop that generates the samples and computes the histogram. Good luck with the next task.